Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to show you guys how to effectively create notes, both physically and digitally. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up on the video, and leave a comment saying hi. I love hearing from you guys. My physical note-taking strategy consists of three notebooks, a field notebook, a notebook, and a sketch pad. My field notes are the dirty, carry around, shove it in your pocket notebook. It's practically a phone to me at this point. The purpose of it serves mostly as a way to keep track of ideas that I come up with on the fly and general to-do list to have on my person. Here's a snapshot of my current field notes. In the front, I have general information written down so if I lose it, I can have it be returned to me. On the left page, I keep to-do list of tasks I want to complete and stuff I really need to buy, oh, really need. <laughs> on the right, or general notes of things I kind of need to remember or don't want to forget. Moving on to my notebook, this baby is what brings my projects to life. It serves as a bigger surface for me to plan projects, draw flowcharts, design UIs, a ton of other stuff. I'll show you a few snapshots so you can get a better picture. The last notebook I use is the scratch pad. It's great for temporary notes, writing out math and different equations, drafting ideas, etc. That's pretty much the extent of my physical note taking services. I do recommend using graph paper, especially if you have shitty handwriting like myself. It's great for making diagrams, flowcharts, etc. Also, if you have the ability to put annotation stickers or sticky notes within your notebook, they help a great deal. So I definitely do recommend that. Moving on to the digital landscape, when typing notes, I use Obsidian, not sponsored or anything, but Obsidian is an ultra powerful note taking app that will organize notes written in a language called Markdown. If you don't know what Markdown is, it's a simple marking language used for documentation and note taking. Let me show you how to use it. This is my Obsidian notebook. It has been pretty heavily riced, so don't expect yours to look just like this when you first install Obsidian. Um, to the left, I have my general file directory structure. You can see the different folders I have and all of my notes. Now you'll notice my notes are actually not in a folder and I'll get into the reason why this is later. In the bottom left, I have the tag directory structure to show the different tags and how they are organized. In the top right, I have a mini calendar, which is showing a more condensed version of this calendar right here. This calendar isn't real. I just kind of made this so that way you can see what my calendar would typically look like. You can add different events. For example, I can say we have homework due on Monday. We'll say it's a daily note. We get a task event and save. And you can see that now it's saying that we have homework due on this day. We can also add different events. So let's say on Tuesday, we have a pool party. And the pool party, let's say it's a personal thing. And let's say it goes from 4.30 all the way until 9 p.m. for some reason. And boom, you have your pool party and you can move it around wherever you want, but I'll just keep it there for now. Um, that's pretty much the extent of the calendar. There's not too, too much that goes into it, but you can connect notes and stuff if you wanna have uh, notes actually connected to the actual note that you have on the calendar. It's pretty powerful stuff, but I'll leave that for you to explore. In the bottom right, I have the Obsidian graph view. You can just see how my notes are all kind of interconnected between each other. It's really cool thing that Obsidian does. They're trying to show that your notes should be your second brain, if you will. So this is kind of representing that. Um, I also have a timer here, a Pomodoro timer. Pomodoro timer is just like a 25 minute work timer. It's a five minute break timer. And you kind of just interval between the two and you can do work. I kind of like to have it, it kind of keeps me on track and allows me to take healthy amounts of breaks from my work without getting too distracted from the stuff that I do need to get done. I also have a math pad on that corner as well. So I can do things like, I don't know, plot, sign of X, and boom, I can have this plot and I can put this plot into any of my notes that I might need to have. This is a plugin. Most of these are plugins, but we will get into plugins and all those other things later. In order to actually create notes in Obsidian, go ahead and hit Control N to make a new note. And we'll just call this notes. <laughs> I could probably make a better name, but we'll, we'll stick with notes for now. In order to type notes, you just type notes, type notes, right? Um, I still couldn't have spelled that right somehow. Type notes, there you go. I also have Vim uh, key bindings enabled on my Obsidian notes, just so you guys know. Don't feel the need to do that, but just know that I do have that set up. So if you're wondering how I'm flying through all this stuff, that is the reason why. Now, notes are cool, but we also want to have general titles in our notes to kind of help us organize the different content between them. So in order to do this, you can use something called headers. So I'll make a header one. So you'd make one single hashtag with a space, 
and header one. So this is kind of like a title. You can type uh, text under here. And the thing with um, headers is that they decrement in size. So header one is the largest size that uses one hashtag. So you would use two hashtags to decrement the size to a header two. And then you can do use three hashtags to make a header three and kind of can kind of see how these are organized between each other, which is pretty cool. So past headers, let's look at lists. So I will say these are lists. There are different lists that we have in Markdown slash Obsidian. So let's go ahead and check those out. The first list is a bulleted list. So bulleted list. And in order to create a bulleted list, you just do a minus sign space and it creates the bullet. So you can just type bulleted one, bulleted, oops, two, I can't type, bulleted three. Cool. And you guys can kind of see how that works. The second type of list we'll cover is a numbered list. And a number list is using the, a number and then the period space. And then now you have your numbered list. We can just do numbered one, numbered two, and numbered three. The last type of list I'll show you guys how to make is a checkbox list. So you can just do a checkbox. And in order to create a checkbox, you do a minus sign with an opening and closing curly brace with a space in between them. And that's how you make a checkbox. We can just say checkbox one, checkbox two, and checkbox three. Cool. And the cool thing with checkboxes is again, I mean, they're, they're checkboxes, so you can kind of check them off as you kind of complete stuff within your notes. So it's pretty helpful to make to-do lists and things like that. Next up is going to be how to make tables. So in order to make a table, you have a pipe. It's a, the little vertical bar over your enter key on the right. And you have your pipe and then you can just put the title of the table you want to make. So I'll just say title and then the close pipe. So these pipes kind of represent columns. So like in between these two pipes would be a column on our table. So we'll just say title value and I have another columns. Now title is the first column value is the second column. Now under there, you can basically kind of open the pipe, do a few minus signs and then close the pipe and it will automatically format the table for you. There is an obsidian plugin to help you with tables to make them a lot more fun and easy to work with. But for now, just ignore that. We'll get to that later, but know that you can make tables. So we'll just say item one, cool. And then item two, cooler, right? And then boom, that's how you make a table. So it's pretty simple stuff that you guys can kind of work through if you want to have a table in general, the ways to kind of take notes. The next thing I want to cover for you guys are code blocks. So code blocks are ways for you to have code represented within Obsidian. So if you can have it one of two ways, you can have it inline. An inline code block looks like this. And basically you would have a back tick. It's the backwards apostrophe, it's in the top left of your keyboard. And here you can just put, let's put some Python code, we'll just do print, hello world. So yeah, just like that, you have your, you know, inline code block. Alternatively, you can have a multi-line code block by using three back ticks, it'll auto format for you. And we can type in our code here, hello world. You guys can see that you have the code block here. It allows you to copy it if you want to and put it into some other code editor or something like that. If you want syntax highlighting at the end of the first row of batics, feel free to just type in the language you're working in and Obsidian for the most part will probably have the syntax highlighting language for you. So that's pretty helpful when taking notes. Next up, let's look at latex. So latex is a way of typing math within Obsidian. So in order to do inline latex looks like this. And then what you basically have is dollar signs. So in between two dollar signs, you can type in, I'll just use chemistry, right? H2O and boom, you have H2O, which is pretty cool. And also if you want multi-line, you just do two dollar signs and enter and in between those two dollar signs, you can have your latex. So I just do H2O again, and you guys can kind of see the difference between them, right? Uh, the multi-line kind of gets centered on your obsidian notes, which is pretty cool. Let's cover how to do images and embeds. So in order to do images and embedding within your obsidian notebook, let's go ahead to a terminal, let's type NeoFetch. I just need a screenshot of something. So we'll get a screenshot 
of my NeoFetch and you can just paste the image and it automatically gets embedded into here. Now you'll notice that the format for actually having images within Obsidian is an exclamation point with two brackets and whatever the name of the image is in between. In Obsidian, if you go into your settings, go into files and links in the default location for new attachments, you can specify a folder for you to save your attachments. You guys can see I have saved mine in a folder called assets. So every time I paste a image into Obsidian, it gets saved into this assets folder that I have, which is pretty helpful. Now note that you don't only have to embed images, you can also embed other files this way, right? I can embed the notes file, for example, within our own notes file, just so you can get an idea and you can embed it just like that. Now I'm not going to keep this embed because it looks kind of weird, but if you want to embed other files within your other files, you can totally do that. And the last thing I'll show you guys is how to do wiki links. And basically it allows you to actually connect other files into your files. But instead of like an embed, it's more like a link. Like if you've been on Wikipedia and you can click on other links to visit other pages, it's just like that. So visit other pages with and then in two brackets, you can put the name of the file that you want to visit. So if we make a new file, let's call it new file. And we can just put like hello in here. Then in our notes, we can put the new file and boom. So instead of this, we say like check out our new file. And you guys can see that new file is actually like linked and you can click it and it'll take you to the new file, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. You can also see that now that I've deleted the new file note is kind of grayed out here because that file no longer exists. But I want to delete this because we don't really need that anymore anyway. When it comes to organizing notes, folders are by far the most popular method. Most of you are already familiar with folders as a method of storing files by similar subjects. For example, if you had a folder called Python, you can store all of your Python notes in there. But what if you had taken notes on how to build Python classes, for example? What would you put this file in? Would you put it in a folder called Python or your folder called Programming Resources? Tags are a different method of organizing notes. A tag allows you to connect multiple topics to one, exactly how a hashtag allows you to connect to multiple topics to like a social media post. We can use tags within Obsidian to organize our notes more ideally. In Obsidian, let's go ahead and create some tags we can easily identify and search for this file within Obsidian. In Obsidian, there is a search tag at the top, which allows you to search different ideas, folders, files, properties of your notes within Obsidian. Let's create a tag. You just use the hashtag and then the name of your tags. We'll just call this Markdown Course because this is a file that we created from our Markdown course. Now I'm going to create a new note and in here, blah, blah, blah. Let's just say this is notes from the Markdown course. We learned more advanced stuff about Markdown, all the coolest features. And now we can also connect this to our Markdown course. So now if you click on it, it will automatically be searched for, and you can see the two notes from our Markdown course. This file specifically from the course is a really good resource for me to remember how to write certain pieces of Markdown, right? Let's say if I forget how to do a code block in Markdown, I already have it in my notes that I can refer back to, but I don't want to search through the entire Markdown course. I just want to search for this specific file. So this file, I'll go ahead and give a resources tag. So now I know that this file is not only part of a markdown course, but also is a file that I want to refer to in the future for how to write basic markdown syntax. So now instead of having to decide between two folders, I can just give it both tags and easily identify it. Tags actually have a subdirectory structure. I don't remember the exact um, professional title for this, but basically you can add a file path to your tags to give them more specificality. Instead of resources, I could do resources slash, you can see some of the resources I already have here, like resources for Linux, resources, resources for mobile, resources for military, resources for a bunch of stuff. So in here, I'll do resources slash markdown. So now all resources that I want to have for markdown stuff, I can check out. And the thing is too, like I can go on resources so you guys can see the different resources I have here. And you guys can see Markdown with my notes right there. And this is amazing because you can now basically have one file linked to quote unquote multiple folders. 
I quickly wanted to cover the PARA note-taking system. PARA, P-A-R-A, -A, standing for Projects, Area, Resources, and Archive, is a system of organizing notes that guides users to know exactly how to store and access their notes. Projects are short-term tasks that you are currently working on. For example, the script of this video would be considered a project. An area is representative of an area of responsibility. For me, areas usually consist of notes from courses or long-term projects like the development of my website. Resources are notes that you want to be able to easily reference in the future, like those git commands you can never remember, or like in the video, the markdown syntax that we wrote down. Last of all, archives are notes that you no longer need, but instead of throwing them out, you kind of should keep them. You should honestly keep most, if not the majority, or if not all of your notes, uh, that at least that you can keep. Uh, you'll be surprised how often I've come back to archive notes. They can be really, really helpful. Before I head out, I wanted to show you some cool resources to spice up your Obsidian workflow. Here are some of the notable plugins that I like to use. Advanced Slides, a way to create slideshows within Obsidian. Advanced Tables, helping you create better tables within your Obsidian notes. The Calendar plugin, allowing you to have a mini calendar within your Obsidian notebook. Escala Draw, a way to draw within the Obsidian notebook. Tends to be pretty helpful for handwritten notes. The Full Calendar plugin, allowing you to have a full scale calendar within your Obsidian notebook. Paste URL into selection makes it a lot easier to have links within your Obsidian notebook because you can just highlight a piece of text and paste the link on top of it so it's automatically formatted to the Obsidian format structure of links. If you are a Vim user like me, you might appreciate the relative line numbers plugin. Tag Wrangler can be a helpful way to organizing your tags. If you want to rename tags across your entire notebook, it can be helpful for moving tags that used to be in your archive to a resource or vice versa or however else you want to organize your tags. The tag folder is a visual way of seeing your tags throughout your Obsidian notebook. It's the one that I have in the bottom left of the screen here. Templator is awesome. It's a great way to create templates for different files that you will have within your Obsidian notebook if you don't feel like having to retype your notes over and over and again. The Kanban board plugin allowing you to create, well, Kanban boards. I do have this Kanban board for the development of my website currently. If you guys uh, want to see progress on that, just check out some of the streams that have been going on recently. And again, this is all in Markdown. In fact, you can actually open this as Markdown and you can see the Markdown structure. If you guys are curious about the theme that I have been using, I'm using Mado Miniflow. It's a pretty awesome obsidian thing to use. I also have the custom style settings on it so that way I can make it a little bit more pretty. I also suggest checking out Protocol Blue. This is an obsidian theme that I made on Obsidian. You guys can see Blue Cosmo. So if you guys want to support me and some of the stuff I've worked on, you guys can also use this obsidian theme. I also want to give a special shout out to fellow YouTuber Cyan Voxel. He has some incredible CSS files to pretty up the look of your Obsidian Vault. So definitely suggest checking out his work. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Happy hacking.